Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great out here playing with my Tradescantias. I got a whole flant, whole flant. I got a whole flat of these plants in the mail. These are the Tradescantia albiflora nanooks. At least that's what they were sold to me as. Really fun, pretty, and very, very easy to grow plants. They're one of those house plants, or tropical plants, depending on which one you have, that I just feel like is something that just about everybody who's into plants comes across at some point. They're very common and pretty easy to grow, but there are always some exceptions to that, right? There are always some outliers and some things that can throw things off with easy to grow plants. I initially had these potted up, at least these two over here, this mug and the pitcher with an echeveria in the center. And I was like, you know, that's just not going to work. These plants grow so aggressively. They're going to choke that out so quickly. So I pulled the echeverias out. I thought about maybe putting an aeonium or something in the tops that would come up and over them, but it really, I don't, it doesn't need it. I don't think that that's necessary. We'll talk more about that when I get to the growth of the plant. Tradescanthia in general is a pretty large group of plants. They can be found growing all the way up from areas in Canada all the way down into South America, down in like Argentina. So they can take a lot of different climates, right? Now that's not true for like the albiflora, it's a tropical. Everything that I talk about in this video is going to be for Tredescanthias like the albiflora, the zebrina, the albiflora nanook, which is what these are, the fluminensis. The warm growing, the more tropical Tredescanthias, the ones that we most typically see as house plants. But like I said, there are a lot of different types. Many of them can even be grown as perennials all the way down to zone five, but they don't they don't usually look like this though. I'll go ahead and do a quick rundown on these for people who don't want like an at length video. They just kind of want the quick points. These plants like anywhere from indirect to full sun indoors. I would say anywhere from at least four hours of bright light to all day bright and intense light. Prefer an organically rich well-drained potting soil. I fertilize mine about twice a month during the active growing season with an all-purpose liquid fertilizer. Once a month would probably be fine too. Would definitely be fine. They're pretty resilient plants. Extremely easy to propagate. Maybe one of the easiest house plants out there to propagate actually. Lastly, probably the most important thing, they are extremely toxic. Keep these away from curious mouths. There we go, and that's the more brief care. Oh, now the sun comes out? That's not great timing at all. Okay, that's better. Sort of. Anyways, so the way I grow Tradescantia, the varieties that are most common as houseplants, that is, is sometimes a little bit different from a lot of what I see suggested online. Sometimes it's like right on par with it. It just kind of depends on the time of year. I'm going to focus on mostly growing them as a house plant and if you have them outdoors. There are variables that can factor what conditions the plant's going to need based on the location where you have it. So sometimes you do have to play around with things a little bit, move your plants around, and then you can sort of get to see what they like. Now for me, uh, during the uh, active growing season, which is summertime, I have mine outdoors and I start them off in a fairly low filtered, very bright indirect lights where the light will filter through leaves and stuff like that. And then within a couple weeks, I'll move them out to where they're getting more and more sun. But for the most part, they get a few hours of bright, intense morning light, and then it's filtered throughout the rest of the day. These Tradescanthias and the Zebrinas, even though they are common as houseplants, they're also oftentimes used as annuals thrown into hanging baskets. You can mix them in with plants like Bird of Paradise, Cordelin Fruticasas. There's all, all kinds of houseplants that you can actually plant these up around the bases of and have them spill over the edges. And they'll take similar conditions because they're pretty versatile plants as long as things are warm. It's when temperatures are a little bit more cool that things become a little bit more tricky. Sometimes that's how things are grown indoors, right? It's not often that warm inside the home. So with that in mind, talk about watering the plants. Outdoors, I give them regular watering. They get watered just with everything else. If it gets to a point where there's heavy precipitation and there's just like no break from the rain, then I'll move them someplace a little bit more sheltered because these actually do prefer to dry out a little bit in between waterings. You see a lot of info out there saying to keep them consistently moist. I don't know if that's just like standard house plant chatter making its way into the care instructions for the plants. But generally, if you were to keep these consistently moist at all times, especially if temperatures are cooler, 
then you may have some issues with some rotting around the bases of the stems. That's just something to watch out for and be aware of. Look for shriveling, yellowing along the edges of the foliage, the foliage dropping, and the plants overall just looking really sad. Indoors during the winter months, they're not getting anywhere near as much light, even though I mean I try my best, but it's just the way my house is situated. I would probably only water them like, I don't know, maybe once a week, and that's only if the top inch to inch and a half of soil feels dry. But like I said, if you have them someplace that's nice and toasty and warm, that's not going to be the same thing. If they're getting lots of light, lots of warmth, then they're still thinking that they're in active growth and that they need to keep growing. They're going to use more water. Temperatures are cooler, they don't think they need to use that water, and it just sits around their roots and it can cause a lot of problems. Same thing with fertilizing. I don't fertilize at all during the winter because the conditions I grow them in, they're not an active growth that wouldn't benefit them at all. It would only cause problems really. But during the summer months, late spring through late summer, it's when I do fertilize and I just use an all-purpose fertilizer with them. There is some continuous release in the potting mix and I'll sometimes I'll put a little bit of like tomato fertilizer in with them. They are succulents and that extra boost of calcium helps build nice strong cell walls to develop a more sturdy plant. Like I said though, just a little bit, tomato fertilizers sometimes have, well usually have a lot of nitrogen in them and that can sometimes be a bit much for their roots. See it, just, just a smidge. And if you're using a really nice or organically rich potting mix, then uh, you may not even need to worry about it. It's always best to make sure that nutrients and everything are proper and balanced for our house plants, but a really nice organically rich potting mix or garden soil, if you have these in the ground, wouldn't, don't use garden soil in a pot. But if they are in fact very rich and have lots of good things in them, then you shouldn't actually have to water all that often or fertilize it. You shouldn't have to fertilize all that often. Oh good, the sun's back. Those really nice mixes, that, that can be a harder thing to come by in a potting mix because with everything draining through constantly every time you water the plant, it's not always that easy to get that balance that you would in the ground. So liquid fertilizer once a month. How many times have I said it? I think you get the point. And these Tredescantias, they are such incredibly strong growers that you might want to expect needing to repot them every single year. At the very least, they're going to need heavy prunings, which is very easy to do. These are fresh, they just got potted up, so they don't have a ton of growth on them. But even just with these four that I have here on the table, I'm gonna have to give these a cut back. I would say at least, at the very least, two times this summer because these aren't very big containers for them. They're extremely fast and strong growers under ideal conditions, of course, especially when you have them outside where there's a lot of warmth and they're in the precipitation and they're able to dry out and everything's right for them, then they will grow very quickly. And giving them a cutback's not a big deal. It's very simple. You just take your snippers and cut them where you want them to be. Generally, uh, you could cut them back up to 50%, if not more. I mean, heck, you could really, you could probably cut them back 90% and they would be fine, though I don't really think I'd recommend doing that unless you have like a major infestation issue with some sort of insect, fighting off some sort of disease, something like that. Other, those are pretty extreme circumstances. I doubt that you'd need to worry about that. That's not something I think the average grower is going to have to worry about, at least not very often. I hope not. And they're so easy to propagate. So you can take those pieces that you cut off and uh, cut them into little one to, well, probably two inch sections would be best. I have one that fell out when I did my repotting right here. Just take these pieces, get them to where there's just about two leaves on them. This one has three, so I would go ahead and pull this piece off right here, like so. Okay, there's still three, you get my point. Two leaves on top, you'd want about an inch to an inch and a half of stem on here. This is a little bit shorter than that, you get the point though. And you can just stick that into some moist soil and it'll take off and start rooting. You can also use water, they will propagate in water be a little bit more careful with that because they are succulent. Sometimes that stem will start to brown, rot, and get kind of squishy. And they're so easy to propagate, you can literally just take pieces of them, set them on top of some moist soil, that's soil that you want to keep fairly damp, and they'll take off and root on their own. Like I said, extremely easy to propagate. In fact, I have had uh, with some Zabrinas before, I've taken their hanging baskets and just set another hanging basket full of soil next to it and it taken the piece that was hanging over and laid it on top of that potting mix, that moist soil, given it a few weeks, they rooted in it. I just made a cut to separate them and then I had two hanging baskets just like that. So incredibly easy to do. I know that that's probably a lot of people don't want to set their hanging baskets on the ground and do something like that, but I'm just emphasizing the point. Super easy to multiply these plants. Think about that when you see these online with outrageous prices for cuttings. 
Just putting that out there. There are people out there really taking advantage of people. As far as pests are concerned, you want to watch out for things like spider mites, mealybugs somewhat. If you start to notice the foliage is getting dull and you see up close some webbing and stuff like that, you can take them to a sink or a shower, hose them off heavily and start using an insecticidal soap and then an oil on them. And that will usually help with the problem. Ultimately, keeping them in an environment that has good airflow and a decent amount of humidity will help keep the spider mites away. A little bit easier to be preventative instead of reactive, right? If your Tritoscanthia is really long and stretched out, it's like there's a lot of space in between the foliage along the stem, you notice maybe some dull looking foliage isn't quite as vibrant as it should be, that's usually a sign that they're not getting anywhere near enough light. Go ahead and move them, put them someplace where they're going to get more direct light, they will appreciate it. The more light they get, the more I want to say bushy, but I don't really know if that's the proper way to describe it because they're a trailer. But the more close together the foliage is going to be, creating a more bushy and full appearance. Like bushy. And then, of course, too much light can be an issue too. If you start to notice spotting the foliage starting to bleach out that photo oxidation happening, then move them into less light. Browning edges along the leaves, that's usually an indication of not enough water or the air is too dry. And of course, yellowing on the foliage is usually an indication of the plants getting too much water go ahead and let them dry out more in between waterings and i didn't mention this but they do flower some people would consider the flowers to be insignificant i think they're cute they're just little tiny little things but they look cute overall these are very easy to grow really rewarding plants to grow in general because they just they are such strong growers growth is so abundant it's a very rewarding plant to grow and again there are things to consider like if you live someplace like maybe the pacific northwest where temperatures are much more mild and cool and humid you probably wouldn't want to water these anywhere near as often as someone saying like Arizona and the southwest where the air is very dry and you're going to need to water them much more frequently. There's always those little factors to keep in mind. What are some of your experiences with some Tratoscanthias? There's lots of different varieties out there. What are some of your favorites? Like I said, these are the Nanooks, the Zabrinas are also really popular. Then there's the Lilac and just the regular Albiflora. There's tons, tons of different types. There's the Pelita, which I will probably do a separate video on which I'll explain when I do that video because the information is going to be kind of similar, but there are some differences. Like I said, comment down below or just say hi. I love talking to y'all. Tips, tricks, suggestions, always appreciated. It's impossible to remember everything to mention in a care video, though I do my best. I have all my social media linked down below. I use Instagram more than anything else. And if you do the whole, you know, the YouTube thing with the likes and subscribes, I really appreciate it. It makes a big difference for the videos and for the channels. And thank you. And as these fill out and develop, which won't take long, <laughs> not long at all. It's going to fill these out very quickly. You could, last note, I promise, you could take just one little plant and put it in a larger basket or something like that. It will fill it out within a matter of weeks. Uh, that's a little bit of a risky thing to do. You want to make sure that they have access to water so you don't want to bump things up too large in pot size, but it's... It, it, they're so sturdy that usually it's not an issue. Kind of an exception to that bump them up by an inch to two inch rule. But again, you need to know your climate and pay close attention to them. And I'm going to take these little pieces here that broke off and just stick them right back up there in that potting mix and they will get going on their own. Those will take off and fill back out in no time. Yeah, I will have updates on my social media, mostly in the garden tours. Yeah, that'll do it. Like I said, comment down below. Love hearing from everybody. Overall, fantastic plants. You really can't go wrong with these. They grow so abundantly. They have such nice foliage. They're so easy to propagate. You can take little bits of these and share them with friends. And, uh, you know, they might fall apart a little bit easily. They snap sort of easily. But like I said, you just take that piece, stick back in the soil, and it'll just keep on growing. It's like all of us, right? Okay, of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.